In this video we're going to be looking at linear functions. This is the first video in a series of common parent functions. So we're starting off with a linear function. You can see here that we do have a linear function because I was able to draw this with just a line. Hence linear because inside of that we have the word line. In all of these videos we are going to be looking over seven main parts. The overall shape of the graph the x and y intercepts, symmetry, vertex, end behavior, domain and range, and rates of change over intervals. If you need to just jump to one of these, I will in the description put links to all the different topics we're going to be talking about during our linear function video. What is the overall shape to a linear function? Well, here we have a linear function, and I think the main thing that we can say about this shape is that this is a line. It's also really straight. So we have a straight line. Is that all we can say? Are there any gaps in it? No, there are not. So I can say it is continuous. Also, if I start on the left side of my graph, I am traveling up. So I know that my slope is positive. Now wait a minute. Does that mean that all linear graphs have the positive slope? No, it doesn't. Because if I have if this flipped like this, and I start on the left side, I am then going down. So some of my graphs that are linear can be going down, some of them can be going up. This one happens to be going up. My x-intercept is associated with my x-axis, which is this line right here. And my y-intercept is related to this line, which is my y-axis. Okay, so if you're ever confused about that, just look for the y-axis or the x-axis. Okay, now the x-intercept is where my blue line here touches my x-axis. So, see here that it touches right at this location and that is at 0 comma 0. Actually the y-intercept touches there too if I look at my y-axis and I come down it touches right there as well. So this is 0 comma 0. Now that was actually pretty boring for this graph. Now this is why this is called the parent function because look at how basic a lot of the things are. So I think we need to do two different examples. So let's go ahead and take uh, another one, another graph, and bring it up from here. And this graph will go like this. And then let's do a third example. Let's bring one down with a negative slope. And we can even bring that, let's bring it through here. Ooh, let's go just like this. There we go. I like that. So if we want to do the green one first, let's try and find the x and y intercept of this. So if I was looking for the x intercept of my green line, I first look for my x axis. I go on over until I touch, and that is at negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So I'm at negative 5 comma 0. Now let's go to the y-axis. So I go on the y-axis, I come down, boom, 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 and I'm right here, and that is at positive 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So my y-intercept equals 0 comma 5. That was a little bit more fun. 
Now let's go for the one with a negative slope, our red one. Let's go x-axis first, so my x-intercept. I start on my x-axis, I go on over, and I'm touching right here, which is at positive 1 and 2. So that would be x equals 2, y equals 0. And for my y-intercept, that is going to be, find your y-axis, come on down, it touches right here, and that's again at positive 2, so I have 0, comma, 2. So just remember, if you are looking for your x or your y intercepts, just look for your x or your y axis. Now let's look at the word symmetry. So the word symmetry is really asking this one simple question. Is it mirrored? So when you think about a face or about mirroring an image, really what we're saying is we want our symmetry straight down the face here, I would really like it if my face was kind of the same on both sides. So if I flipped my face, I would look the same on both sides. Now, what if my beard looked like this? No beard at all on this side. All right, all we got, let's go ahead and put us back uh, clean shaven, on the left side here. Is this face symmetrical? No, it's not. Because if I flip it, if I were to flip it, one side is different from the other side. So we need to ask the same question of this graph. If I took this line right here and I were to flip this graph right here, what I would be left with is a graph would be going the opposite direction. So I'd have to start from here and go up. So this is not symmetrical. There is no symmetry in a linear function or a linear equation. Your vertex and a node are going to be the same thing. So if you don't know what a vertex is, and you don't know what a node is, I think that you in, can intuitively pick it up pretty quickly. So a node, a vertex is a node between at least two edges. So I have two different examples here. Here would be an edge. Here is another edge. And that means I have two distinct edges. What is the spot in between them? That would be my vertex, or also known as a node. Down here, I have one edge. This is a parabola, and I have another edge. What makes these distinct is because they come down, and there's this one point where instead of going down this side, I'm now going up on this side. So because these two edges are connected through this distinct point, we know that this is going to be the vertex. Now if I look over here for a distinct point where I have two different edges, I'm not going to find it anywhere. In fact, I only have one main edge. I can't have a vertex without at least two of them. So if I had another line coming down here, then where they touch, my vertex could be the solution of those two lines, but that's not what this is asking. A linear function is just one line at a time. So for vertex, there is going to be no vertex at all for a linear equation. End behavior answers this one particular question. What happens if I keep going forever? So we have an arrow going up here. If I wanted to split this into two different parts, I kind of have an arrow going this way and this way. 
there are two components to this. And if I were going to keep going forever, I go forever up and I go forever to the right. If I go down to the bottom here, I can split this as well into a component going down and going to the left. So I go left forever and down forever, which kind of goes into domain and range. But let's first answer this question about end behavior. So a linear graph goes forever in all directions. End behavior answers this one particular question. What happens if I keep going forever? So we have an arrow going up here. If I wanted to split this into two different parts, I kind of have an arrow going this way and this way. There are two components to this. And if I were going to keep going forever, I go forever up and I go forever to the right. If I go down to the bottom here, I can split this as well into a component going down and going to the left. So I go left forever and down forever, which kind of goes into domain and range. But let's first answer this question about end behavior. So a linear graph goes forever. in all directions. Domain and range are looking at two main things. So my domain is looking at all of my x values and that's actually x values is really talking about things that are going left and right on the graph and my range is talking about all of my y values and y goes all the way up and down on the graph. So if I want to try and find every single left and right number that this blue line touches, I'm going to go to the end points and I'm going to think about going right forever. Do I ever stop? I never stop. So that means that my right part goes forever and my left part goes to negative infinity. So my domain must go, x must be in between positive infinity and negative infinity. So this would be my domain. Now if I want to think about my range, I need to look at going up and down. So this blue line here never stops having a component go more and more up. So I know I go up forever and I go down forever. So that means by the same way my range, which is all of my y's, have to lie in between positive infinity and negative infinity. The last thing that we are going to look at for our linear function is rates of change. So rate of change is really just talking about the speed or the slope of the graph. Here I have two people on sleds and one person's having a lot more fun. This guy over here is having way more fun because he is going so fast. This one is a little bit slower. The reason why he's going fast is because this is very steep. So what I want you to remember about slope, slope is my rise over my run. So here you can see that I have a pretty good rise for my run, but here I have just a tiny bit of rise for that same amount of run, which means that this one is a low slope and kind of boring. For my graph here, what is actually happening? If I started at this point, what happens to get to say this point? I go up 
my rise, I go up one, two, three, and then I have to go over one, two, three. So my rise over run would be three over three. Let's see if it stays the same. Go from here to here. Up one, two, three, over one, two, three. So my rise and run is not changing at all. And we can see this because this is staying the same exact steepness the whole time. Actually, the easiest way to find my slope is just go from one corner to the next. Up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one, up one, over one. And it never changes its steepness at all. So the rate of change over intervals is constant. I know that it is a constant slope slash rate. And the interval, everything's the same interval. There's actually no separate intervals because just like when we were talking about vertices, this is just one edge, no extra special pieces. I hope that helped you out with your linear parent function. The last thing we want to talk about is what is the equation for a linear function, or in other words, a linear equation. Now the parent equation, this is the most basic, generic, always works equation is y equals mx plus b. Now here, my m and my b has have special meanings. So my m is my slope and my b is my y-intercept. So we have, through the course of this video, actually figured out all of these pieces. My slope is my rise over run, which goes up one over one, up one over one, up one over one, which would be a rise of one, a run of one, so one divided by one is one. And my intercept is right here, my y-intercept is zero, my x-intercept. So if I want to write this actual equation of my line, I would have y equals 1x plus 0. If I simplify that down, I would just have y equals x. So this right here is the equation of this line.